Thanks, guys. Pleasure uh, to answer questions. Yeah. Uh, Rossi, maybe we can just start with the injuries. Um, which of those players uh, are going to be back before the island test? And maybe if you can just run through them for us. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, so good. Stephen Kitzel will be out. John Klein will be out. Lurie Yacher will be out. Jael Pri will be out. Jaden. Uh, Henko, which we had in camp. Kane and uh, Damien and Kirkley. Those will be the guys who's still out of that one. Is that just for Wales now you're talking about? Or? Uh, I'll, uh, first Island Days match also. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, Rossi. Um, if the Bulls lose on Saturday, um, is it, uh, could they be included in the Wales team or is it too late for that ship to sail? Um, no, I think in certain positions, yes, definitely. Um, if you look at the squad that we have here currently, we're going to hopefully announce our team internally on Sunday. Uh, so the guys coming from Monday, uh, you know, especially the newer guys in the team, get settled uh, before we fly out Wednesday. So um, in certain positions, we will be a few young guys next to each other. You know, then some of the Bulls guys, uh, which we know, understand how we want to play and change a few things. Uh, some of them has been, uh, most of them has been at alignment camps. So um, I don't think... Everybody that will eventually be involved with, with the Irish Test matches will get drafted in for the Welsh Test matches for the pure fact that they, they haven't really trained with us apart from next week. So, uh, but then where there's a hell of a lot of experience and, uh, you know, we've got already a few injuries uh, on the outside back, on the wingers. Um, Jason is, is touch and go to be ready then. Uh, but my PMP is fine and, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we might be thin there, but then we've got Owen and we've got Fassi. Uh, but a guy like Valerie Leroux might be somebody who can just help settle down the combinations there. Um, so, yeah, depending on how the guys do tomorrow and injury-wise. But, um, yeah, it wouldn't be ideal for them just to have trained, three training sessions and play this match as well. So. Russ, just, uh, just on that, um, how important will it be for South African rugby that the Bulls put in a strong performance against Leinster on Saturday? No, uh, very important. I mean, uh, as much as I would love to have them in our camp and be with us uh, every single minute since last week, uh, uh, well, since Monday, and, and the alignment camps and everything, uh, uh, Leinster is, I think everybody is, is all countries are striving to have a franchise like like Leinster. I mean, they do sometimes lose big matches, but they're consistently, you know, in the top four, in the final, or host the final, and uh, obviously that get transferred into the national team. So, you know, for us, uh, if the Bulls can pull this one through, uh, I think it's going to be really, really tough. Um, but now, if the Bulls can pull it through, we're fully behind them, and if it means we have to play without the Bulls players, but the South African franchise goes through. Uh, I think that's that's very important and, and, and will boost us overall uh, to eventually get champion cups, uh, victories and, and so on. You know, I think the URC is another step. It's not only the storm, but uh, vitally important. Rusty, in terms of your selection policy, if you like, for, yeah. for Wales, is it kind of a balance between holding guys back or for Ireland keeping guys in cotton wool or giving newcomers a chance? Or how, how do you look at it? Yeah, I think we're at a stage where we don't have the luxury of keeping guys in cotton wool. Uh, you know, a simple thing is a guy like, if you just take a box, has played a lot, but, you know, he's not tired, he's not punched up. You know, uh, same with Vincent, uh, same with Franz, uh, you know, uh, Kalek Harrison came really well fast last year. Uh, when he comes available, he'll probably be someone who just slots in, he's not old and punch drunk, you know, so then a guy like Malcolm is somebody you probably want to manage a little bit and uh, with the other hookers around, you know, you, you have to think carefully because you want to see some new blood playing, but then also you you don't want to do happen what happened in 2018 where, you know, we blooded a hell of a lot of guys, but we lost the test match. So we, we want to win the test match. We want to uh, manage some guys getting back from injury. And then we also want to try and get some youngsters through. So uh, it is a bit of a, I say balancing act, but uh, as, as the weeks go on, we, we get clarity. Okay, Malcolm can, can play in that game. Okay, Jason, uh, we have to manage him still. You know, Gertie is still out. Uh, so 
yeah, as the weeks go on. But uh, I think putting them in cotton will, uh, they won't be their match, ready, match fitness and, and, and almost battle ready for Ireland, you know. Uh, and, and Wales is certainly no pushover as we've always experienced. <clears throat> Um, Rusty, just following up on that, uh, looking back in hindsight, um, the decision in that 2018 game against Wales to, to blood a lot of people, um, looking back in hindsight, do, do you think it was worth it even though you lost or would you rather have actually just won that test and maybe fielded a stronger team? Um, I think twice against Wales, was it, that we picked uh, Wales uh, the other year also in the second test match. Uh, pick a totally different team. Uh, uh, we, we lost that match, but then uh, I certainly think it paid off for some guys who made the step up from maybe playing a tier two team, playing a tier one team, then playing maybe the All Blacks uh, who, or, or, or teams who's number one and two in the world. Uh, but also, you know, we all understand that losing a test match, uh, obviously there comes negativity, there comes a bit of worry with that, there comes a bit of pressure with that. So, uh, without a doubt, you know, we have to keep our long-term hat on. But um, as we all know, as South Africans, well, ourselves, our players, and our management, you don't want to, you don't want to make it easy. Um, those guys must still be able to win that test match. I think that's the most important thing. Brassi, in terms of those uh, youngsters, you know, brought in quite uh, 11 mm -hmm. players, you know, it's quite a nice, big, exciting group, getting a lot of experience now, you know, going into the Swirls game, but also there are a few guys that must out, you know, um, you know, guys like Suleiman Hartenberg down in Western Cape, uh, uh, Sunil um I think even Warwick Land, you know, um, are the, would those guys come in to the possible squad after the Wales Test, or do you think you'll be more bringing in more experienced guys um, to bolster ahead of Ireland? Yeah, um, you know, uh, remember when we played five at nine and ten at the World Cup, you know, uh, there's always, um, and fully understand it, that, that there's question marks around that, you know, and, and we know Fof can do what Sanelli do at nine and ten because we've been seeing him at training sessions, seeing him play for sale, Sharks there, and I mean, he played for us in the World Cup, so, um, yeah, we've got so many great scrum offs, and uh, I actually think with Jaden being uh, injured now, Kubis Reiner is playing really, really well for Montpellier as well. Uh, we've got four, five fives now here currently, um, and um, it depends, you know, if things go well, then one can, uh, not that I have Portugal, it will be easy, and, and we we'll see what they did to, uh, to Fiji. So, um, but we we'll certainly pick our games where we Blood some youngsters and for me San Ele is almost not a youngster and he's a guy that has been around the block. He him and Jaden was together in the junior spring box. He can play nine and ten now. So he's definitely somebody that's versatile and one or two injuries and a guy like him might be pulled up. But um, yes, I, I, I can't say now what we're already gonna do because I'm not quite sure. So we first must see how does the guys go against Wales. Uh, that we build momentum. Are we going in the right direction? Then, then it's the uh, home series against Ireland, which uh, win, win, win is paramount. Like all these matches, and then a Portugal test match become uh, either are the squeeze on us or are we a bit, a bit uh, out of the pressure zone, if we can call it that way. And that will certainly have an influence on our uh, selection. Uh, Rusty, just you, you've picked three locks. Um, Eric is obviously going to become available yeah. at some point, but. Um, Lurit and John, are you maybe a bit thin there in the, or have you got other plans in the engine room? No, we, we, we are a bit thin, uh, um, but you know, Salman has been pushing really hard always. Again, the guy who's coming through a junior, a junior bunker, being captain there, and always when it's his turn, it's just a bad injury, you know. So he would have been a real contender going to the World Cup last year, uh, but then he got that long term injury. Uh, he's looking really good, uh, typical front lock uh, type of. And with him and Archie and Evan being solid front locks, and you know Sos can call, and, and Archie can also call at five, which he did. Uh, um, definitely, the, uh, you know, the, the one, two of the Bulls guys would, would be lovely to see mm -hmm. how it goes this week, weekend against Leinster, who forms a big part of, of the Irish team, and that might definitely sway us in that, that direction. And then obviously, you've got Peter Saves at Tua, who who can easily slot in for you um, at, the, at the five lock and, and can call the line outs. Uh, but I agree with you. Um, I remember when it was John playing Archie, Lewis, all of those guys last year, just being in the huddle 
uh, our role was much taller than it's currently. <laughs> so, um, but uh, we're looking at that. Uh, coach, um, with all of these new players coming in, then then what uh, for them to have a long-term future in the Springboks? What do you want from them? What are you expecting from them? And what are you looking at specifically to, for them to stay on the team? Yeah. Yeah, for Ireland and Rugby Championship. Yeah, yeah. everyone is different. You know, um, a guy like Edward, for example, now with uh, the way he's training and the way he's putting up his hand, and and, and the moment he feels start feeling comfortable and safe in the environment and, and, and can be himself and and within our systems, you know, do things that uh, other players can't do. Uh, uh, like Jason, we pulled him in cold. Uh, uh, five days before New Zealand test match and they just slotted in. Uh, these boys have now a chance to have been at the alignment camps, uh, virtual, in person at Cape Town, uh, and now having a full camp week and next week a test match week. You know, it's, it's all about how quickly they understand, how quickly uh, they don't have to think too much. Uh, things come naturally so that the reason why we pick them is they've got something about them uh, and that's what we see which is different from other players which we did not pick, uh, that we want to see come through. Uh, while feeling settled and, and being themselves uh, in the environment, and that's also up to our coaches to, to help them, to, to bring to the party what they have, uh, and that's what I hope to see. Uh, this is maybe a follow-up on what Morgan asked, uh, looking ahead at the Portugal test, which is still <coughs> far away, yeah. but how would you approach a test like that um, with a second tier team if you want to call it that do you want to bleed the youngsters there would it be a mix of experience with these youngsters how would you approach that yeah i'm, I'm trying to say it in better words you know it, I, I think it all goes with momentum uh when we the previous times uh remember we didn't have 2020 so we had to, to build after 2019 uh, but then we did have the next year but it was the lion series as well but um, if, if the momentum is going with you and everybody's positive and, and I can almost say the vibe around the spring box from you guys, from the supporters within the camp, uh, then it's easy to, to, to make some changes and it's always a positive thing. Uh, so the first thing is, you know, if this wealth test match goes well, one can, one can say, okay, six or five of the guys made it really and we've got them as bankers. Uh, and, and some of them might play themselves into the Irish uh, um, series because some boys are not available yet, like the guys who play in the Premiership and, and in France, and then obviously the Bulls are not available currently. So, uh, yes, if everything goes to plan, not because we don't rate Portugal, but because we've got momentum and things go well, uh, then it's a good game to, uh, I wouldn't say just throw in a lot of youngsters in there. Uh, I think still you have to have a good good spine in there that helps those youngsters. But some of them might get experience now against Wales already. So uh, I hope it makes sense. It's just how the momentum goes at that stage. Of course, just looking at your hooker situation, it seems like it's a healthy situation to have, especially when you have a player like Malcolm Marks coming back. But you also might want to give a player like Andrew Hubble fans an opportunity in the Premier League. How do you balance that between maybe giving an opportunity and also giving rugby to the legs of Marks who hasn't played? Uh, right, since uh, that injury in France. Yeah, I see the big thing is they, they train against each other and sometimes our scrum sessions and morning sessions and line out sessions, uh, we sometimes put each other under more pressure than, than we sometimes experience uh, in games. So having them in training camp, they are scrumming against Joseph, scrumming against uh, Bongi, uh, feeling Ox on this side, you know, feeling France on that side, you, you learn a lot. Uh, and you see a lot of the guys. Um, so, uh, again, a guy like Robis, uh, you know, he's, he's been doing really, really well for, for, for the Bulls. Um, you know, we even, we even had Mark Evans start in the last two games of the World Cup, uh, who helped us out there. Uh, who I really think it's somebody, uh, you know, where we can take sometimes a chance if you pick, pick squats, because uh, he really can, can fit in in both those roles. But then again, there's a guy like Vessels from the Bulls who now is a very versatile uh, prop and hooker, uh, which uh, bolts well for the future. Uh, when you look to 2027, I mean, 
they certainly the name she means and Andre Kofenter, uh, Vessels, Krobis, uh, and Alec Malcolm and those guys. Uh, so we were really thin last year when we got in that final game against uh, at the World Cup. Uh, it looks pretty okay now. Uh, Russ, just in terms of captaincy, obviously no CF next week where he is going to be captaining for, but after you've named that spot for art, will you make an announcement on who's going to be the long-term captain or kind of go game by game? No, we will announce the captain. Uh, this week it will be probably be, uh, to be honest with you, inside the team the captaincy is not such a big thing. Obviously the long-term permanent captain is something. But when we go into this uh, wealth test match with, without Sia, uh, and without seeing if Sia comes with, without an injury back to South Africa, and we can assess him and he'll see how he slots in and those kind of things. Um, you know, we have two weeks after the wealth test match. Um, but yeah, it will probably be Peter Steph the Tour or, or even uh, uh, it can be Bongi, you know, but then you might want to start Malcolm to, to manage his game time uh, so that you know, if Bongi goes down in 10 minutes, Malcolm doesn't have to play a full 70 or something like that. So, uh, but I, I must just say the guys are all are leading really well. The, the core of the group that's been with us for four years, uh, I understand that there's youngsters around them. Everybody's coaching with us and helping with us. So we'll make that call on, on Sunday night uh, after the Bulls game uh, internally and uh, we'll announce a captain for Wales. But then when we announce the Irish squad after that, you know, obviously we'll announce. Um, and obviously a guy like Sia will be in the running if everything goes really well and he's injury free and those kind of things. That was my question. Uh, coach, just a question around fact that a lot of teams were benchmarking against the box when they played this year, yeah. uh, just to check where they are. Uh, how much pressure does it put on you to sort of like innovate uh, the style of play, considering the fact that they know our strengths? Yeah, look, luckily I don't think people can, can keep uh, beating that wrong. You know, of course, uh, prior to 2019, everybody said nobody gave us a chance, and then if, uh, prior to 2023, everybody said now the pressure is on you. So I, I, I think we, we're kind of used to that kind of pressure. Uh, not that it makes anything easier, um, but the reality is, you know, this is our reality. We know how hard we work and how hard we train and what we can do and what the potential of the players are, what the talent is, how we operate from within. So we can't control how motivated those guys are on that side. You know, we can only control how focused, how ready, uh, um, and yeah, uh, I guess that's the that's one of the challenges, but. It certainly makes the guys more edgy, uh, more determined, because uh, uh, that's what will happen uh, with the teams play play against us. And even a team like Portugal, when I say even, it sounds like um, one almost want to uh, say, obviously they're a tier two team, but uh, beating Fiji is not a fluke. You know, it, it, it doesn't happen if there is not a, a, a lot of good players in that team. And knowing my Portuguese friends in Bloemfontein, there will be a lot of support. <laughs> Support there for that. Uh, coach, um, just to take us through this, the new relationships that you've had to build with even your own coaching staff, you know, yeah. Tony Brown there. What are they bringing to the party that's different? What is, and is, how is it going to change the approach? And has it already changed the approach of you guys coaching and the way you guys are possibly going to play? Yeah, it's interesting when, when people ask us about chasing the sun too, you know, are we giving too much away, are we not giving too much away, are we giving too much access or not? Um, I think if you go and watch chasing the sun, you must know all the things that you showed there will definitely change. Um, uh, and the things that we didn't show will probably stay the same. Um, uh, no, I, I, I know Tony for a really long time. Uh, I coached him at the Stormers. Uh, I know he's the kind of guy that and he did slot in really quickly. He played for the Sharks and for the Stormers. He knows South Africa. Uh, he knows how we think. Uh, and yes, uh, you also what a guy like Felix did. And I mean, uh, Felix, when I went to Munster, went straight from breaking his neck to being my assistant coach at Munster. Uh, I think it was his first coaching gig. And when you see when, what a guy like that has, he's now got two World Cup titles. Now, Tony has experience that uh, not a lot of guys have. Uh, and in a country, uh, in Japan obviously, but also in New Zealand, who, who was probably one of the, who's still one of the top ranked teams consistently. So he brings a lot of excitement, uh, um, knowledge, 
Um, and, and I think definitely uh, open some of our right hand players' eyes in, in, in opportunities and utilizing opportunities. And then Jerry, again, I coach with him and Felix at Munster, you know, he's a, he's a typical, uh, like, like Felix, or, uh, you know, hours and hours behind the computer, just like job work, um, very much the same mold. Uh, but again, uh, one or two things that's uh, exciting about, about what he can do into our defense system. Uh, the challenge is always how quickly can we bring all of those things together to work uh, in, in a big taste match. But uh, very excited about those two. Um, also, Perry was uh, the other analyst uh, in France uh, who helped us out. You know, he'll be with us from next week. Uh, he definitely also bring another dimension with Lindsay. He's our current analyst. Um, and then you have to pay uh, I think having the pipes there for every training session, every scrum session, any line out session, uh, we're almost used to having a referee here uh, who's last year uh, could have still refereed the World Cup final. So I think the, the new people in the management team is, is definitely contributing in the way we want to do. Brassi, um, I know you weren't, I mean, you weren't selecting for a tournament like you were for the World Cup, but you took one recognized fly after the World Cup and you've got five in this squad. What's the thinking behind, behind having that many? That's the first part. And then the second part is, was someone like um, Sia Masuku as much of a sort of bolt from the blue as it seemed to be for, for most of the rugby public? Yeah, um, look to the World Cup, you, you want to go and, and win the tournament. Uh, that's why, you, you know, we can go with two and hopefully another gets ready and we always know there will be injury. I've never been to a World Cup where there hasn't been injury. We always said if there was an injury apart from the front row, and by that I included the hooker. Uh, but then unfortunately Malcolm got injured, but we, we needed uh, uh, under in that World Cup. Uh, a tournament like that, you there. Doesn't help you have five lives there. Uh, of course, only, only three can really play. You can only have three, and that's at 23. Uh, where you can have a lot of nines, of course, it makes training more effective. Uh, and and you, you, it's, more, it's more effective for, for and productive your training sessions. And uh, now, uh, building to World 2027, uh, we still have the luxury of having Andre here. Uh, you know, well, Gaza is injured, uh, Damien is injured. But now, certainly now it's the time to, to get the youngsters in. I know Sia is not that young, but uh, Jordan and, and the other guys who's involved. Uh, yeah, that's why they, they, they are pulled in now. Because uh, in a World Cup year, uh, it just doesn't make sense to try a few fly-offs then. If, if, you know, if you can try it now in the next two, three years. And Rassi, this Welsh case is obviously because it falls out the international window, very difficult in terms of logistics, player availability, or probably European contingent, Paul still being in the URC. Um, but is it still a really nice experience for you guys? And is it something that you'll look to do, uh, keep doing in the future? You know, maybe having one outside of the window where you can have more of the youngsters and more of a very core South African group involved and at a neutral venue, you know, against yeah. other teams. Is it something you guys quite enjoy? Yeah, we do. Uh, look, at the end of the day, when the result is out, it was a test match. Uh, and like we want to have a couple of our players uh, available for this match, uh, I think uh, the Wilds also has six or seven players that will be available that play in the Premiership. So, um, yes, I, I, you know, sometimes you get to this two weeks out from this test match and you think maybe the Stormers go through and the Lions go through and the Bulls go through and then you say, oh, well, we we'll, we'll have a spot for that, and, and and but then when you start dotting down the names, uh, we just see that the depth that we do have in South Africa. Uh, I mean, there's really uh, a couple of players who could have been here, and uh, yeah. So we we'll, we like this test match. It's a full-on test match. Um, but even if the, the Stormers and the Bulls and the Lions were out, I think we still would have been able to put uh, 25 or 28 players on that plane. Because uh, um, some players are just not picked because we, we can't train with 40 players, you know. Uh, that, but they they really really good and they want in their way or want good performance away from from making this one. Guys, we've got five minutes left, so if there's Afrikaans, we need to get it in now. If there isn't, then uh, Stian, you can fire away. Afrikaans, we've got five minutes left. 
If you need Afrikaans, get it now, please, guys. For us, it is an Afrikaans, um, your sort of objectives um, for the activities and as well. So what, what do you want to see? Afrikaans, uh, yeah. We also have a lot of questions about the momentum of the act. I think about Jackie Span last year, Bob Howe, and Mood Vero Peter, I think that was a game for Lure, or two for Lure. So I think we have a good place, but we have a lot of Vero Peter. We have a lot of Vero Peter. We have a lot of kickstart and runstart, and we have a lot of Vero Peter in 2020 with COVID. En hierdie jaar hoop ons rarig dat ons kan ons kan kan develop want in 2021 was die leeuw seizoen dus het weer katroot en die leeuw stuit terug en so bly maar baie binne jou boksie en en try doen wat werk vir jou en wat jy weet wat werk vir jou so ons sal graag klein goeikies wat ons kan ons kan beter doen en dan is al paar groot veranderinge wat ons ook wil maak so hopelijk die alignment kampe wat ons gehad het en die visiese kant van jou en die toets week volgende week sien ons van die goed wat ons rare hart aan gewerk het deerkom en sien ons van die nieuwe spelers en die oude spelers hoe vinnig hulle daar weken aanpas en ook hulle eie x-factor of wat hulle ook al kies het op kan wees en die toets heem alles. Rasmus, jy hoek het terugslag is dit om die hoog op die eerste toetsreeks vir Kirkley te verloor en ook in die eerste toets nie vir Jason Colby te kan kies nie? Man, dat kan nie moeder is op nog daar so as jy om wil tel en ek denk as daar weer die ander kant toe kyk en jy sê, jy slaak maar jy soos maar piepie en as ek sien hoe het wil oefen en jy denk, jy slaak vast, jy kan ook nog vir jou wing speel en jy sien, wat jy sê het al baie vir ons wing gespeel dan maak jy jou so half gerust, want ek denk jy ons kon in een ergere positie gewees het om in die selde positie een beserings te kry nie, maar ons is nog steeds ok. En dit laat ons half gerust voel, as hy ook kyk na 2025, 2026 en 2027. So, natuurlijk, as hy nog 2 seer kry, dan gaan hy een ander plan moet maak, en selfs na van die juniorbokke moet kry, wat rarig al aan het opsteek. En dan is hy een paar mannen wat als ongelukkig was, om die ingetrek te word nie, so dit is ook moet ek sê, ek dink ons diepte is rare goed en weet, as die boel saterig ten eens te perform wie ook al vir hulle wing speel en wie ook al vir hulle fullback speel en dat beteken dat daar is iets rechts daar staan, dan kan ons daar man ook kyk so, in een kant bykie nou is, maar in die ander kant so al wat gerust het vir die volgende stretch, as ek het so kan Wes, sorry, ja ehm I hate to be the one to point it out, but um, you and Shark are in the same city at the same time. Um, <laughs> has there been a quiet conversation about maybe what he may or may not have learned in Ireland? <laughs> no, 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 I will never do that to you. Uh, uh, um, no, uh, we we are planning to try and, and uh, with, with the whole coaching team, our coaching team, uh, uh, it's not, not a, how can I say, not a, they're playing against the Bulls, you know, so... Uh, uh, we'll try and catch up and go and have supper with BO2 uh, and, but that would really be to catch up you know, uh, he's with his coaches and, and we with our coaches and, and he's coaching Leinster now and uh, you know they, they will never be in our lives uh, taking a chance like that uh, him losing the trust that, that the Leinster guys have in him we will never um, put him in that position and the same uh, the other side around but uh, Ja, 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 dan kan ons zondag aan aankondig in Terren, maar het wil seker Bongie of Pieter Stef of Ewan Lees, een van die drie. Ach, dat ek eerst die nou so'n toets, ook as geleentheid, om die obvious ene, seker Ewan of omdat Bongie en Malke miskien helft en helft te gaan speel. Maar ander kere is Pieter Stef, a game soos dit, ook 
gee hom weer een nieuwe experience, iets wat hy voor en toe kan draai, voor en toe uh, kan uitkom in sy game, wat ek dink, hy is amper na die um, ultimate uh, sewe flank wat jy wil heen span, en as jy uh, miskien iets niet so onbe ons het, kan er iets soos die kapteinskap wees, so, maar uh, weer eens, ons, dit is hoe ons vandag voel, kom ons kyk like morgens oefeninge, uh, en dan uh, kom ons kyk doen die boels uh, saterdag, en dan natuurlijk na die wal is, dan sal ons ons uh, toets, ach, ons kaptein vir die volgende paar jaar aan Konrad Vaasia ook hier, uh, in die week sal kom, uh, ach, as in sy klap, uh, baie goed moet ons saamwerk, en alle Steve Lancaster, baie gevullig is om op beskikbaar te stel, uh, amper net soveel soos Zuid-Afrikaanse spelers. Awesome, thank you very much guys.